Hi, I'm Graham, a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon. Today, I'm going to talk about our work, SNAFU, which generates ultra-low power, energy-minimal CGRAs. Allow me to begin by summarizing the work. Ultra-low power sensor devices enable many new applications, but current devices use too much energy. They sacrifice energy efficiency for increased flexibility and programmability. In contrast, our work, SNAFU, generates ultra-low power CGRAs that balance energy efficiency with programmability and flexibility. Specifically, SNAFU was designed from the ground up to minimize energy while still providing a high degree of flexibility through its bring your own functional unit approach. SNAFU uses 41% less energy and is 4.4 times faster than the prior state-of-the-art design, MANIC. We also show through three comprehensive case studies with hand-coded ASICs that SNAFU's flexibility comes at low cost. SNAFU uses only 2.6 times more energy than ASIC designs. Let's move to motivation for why we built SNAFU. Ultra-low power or UOP sensor devices are becoming increasingly pervasive as they enable many new applications, from in-body health sensing to civil infrastructure monitoring to tiny chip scale satellites, and finally to wildlife monitoring. In fact, ARM estimates that these sorts of devices could number in the trillions. So what makes a ULP sensor device? Well, these sorts of devices usually have four components, a low power sensor, like the camera shown in the first box, a microcontroller like the MSB430, a low power radio like the LoRa shown, and finally an energy source, which could be a small battery or solar cell. These components can be miniaturized into the form factor shown on the right of the slide. And usually they operate in the realm of tens of milliwatts. However, when I refer to ULP, I'm talking about devices that are sub one milliwatt. Regardless of the device, energy efficiency is critical. For devices powered by a battery, energy efficiency determines device lifetime because it is impractical to replace batteries on thousands or millions of deployed devices. For devices that harvest their energy, energy efficiency determines device performance because most of the time the device is turned off waiting for the capacitor to recharge and thus by minimizing the energy, one minimizes recharging cycles. In other words, for these devices, time is proportional to energy. One potential solution would be to minimize computation on the device and offload it to the cloud or to a more powerful edge device. However, offloading is not viable because communication is 20 times more expensive than doing compute locally, especially over long distances. Further, offloading also introduces privacy concerns since a central authority must be trusted. Okay, now that I've discussed motivation for why we need SNAFU, I've broken the rest of the talk into four different parts. In the first part, I'll discuss SNAFU, the framework to generate ultra low power CGRAs. In the second part, I'll discuss three design choices we made to minimize energy in SNAFU. In the third part, I'll discuss how we evaluated SNAFU and how SNAFU performs. Finally, in the fourth part, I'll show that SNAFU's flexibility and programmability is surprisingly cheap when comparing SNAFU to ASIC designs. Let's begin with SNAFU, the framework. First, I'll briefly introduce CGRAs, and then I'll discuss what SNAFU brings to the table. Then I'll talk about SNAFU's bring your own functional unit approach. Finally, I'll walk through how code executes on SNAFU. SNAFU generates energy minimal CGRAs. A CGRA or coarse grain reconfigurable array is a collection of heterogeneous processing elements connected via an on-chip network. In our case, the connections and configurations of the PEs is dictated by the compiler. To run code on a CGRA, we first take vectorized C or C++ code, extract the directed acyclic data flow graph, and then schedule that graph onto the CGRA fabric. SNAFU is a framework for generating ultra-low power energy minimal CGRAs. Specifically, it ingests an abstract description of the CGRA topology and generates complete RTL ready for synthesis using industry standard CAD tools. The abstract description tells SNAFU how many PEs and routers there are, what type is each PE, and how routers and PEs are connected to one another. Besides generating RTL, SNAFU also provides a scalable compiler that can target the generated CGRA fabric. 
It ingests vector IC code, extracts the data flow graph, and then uses an integer linear program to find the optimal schedule onto the CGA fabric. You can find more about this compiler in our paper. The other thing that Snafu brings is a bring your own functional unit approach. Snafu provides a standard latency insensitive interface for integrating custom logic into the CGA fabric. Custom logic that adheres to the interface can be configured by Snafu and communicate with other PEs via Snafu's on-chip network. Further, Snafu's compiler can also target this custom logic. Let's see how code executes on Snafu through an example that uses bring your own functional unit. Consider the vectorized piece of code on the left. This code does an element-wise multiplication and then zeros out negative values. In a baseline implementation on Snafu, this sort of operation can be implemented with predicated execution by masking the positive elements of a vector while zeroing the negative elements. However, this sort of operation has a name, ReLU, and is important enough in neural network applications that it makes sense to create a functional unit to compute it. We can use Snafu's bring your own functional unit approach to integrate this new unit, and we can add an instruction for the compiler to schedule. Let's now walk through execution on a CGRA fabric that includes our custom ReLU functional unit. The code's data flow graph is scheduled onto the fabric as shown on the right. In the first cycle, the two load operations mapped to PE1 and 2 are enabled, and they load negative 3 and 2, their first elements of their vectors. In cycle 2, PE3 multiplies these values and produces negative 6, which is sent to PE4, our ReLU functional unit. At the same time, PEs 1 and 2 are also enabled loading their second elements of their vectors. In the third cycle, PE4, our ReLU unit is enabled, but since negative six is negative, it produces zero, which is sent to PE5. Finally, in the fourth cycle, PE5, the store is enabled, storing zero to memory. Execution continues in this way until all elements of the vectors for each operation have been computed. This example execution is only a simple demonstration of what Snafu can do. More can be found in the paper about Snafu support for predicated execution and reductions, as well as prefix, scratchpad, and scatter gather operations. Okay, now that I've introduced Snafu the framework, let's now discuss three design choices we made to reduce energy. The first is Snafu's implementation of spatial vector data flow. The second is Snafu's multi-hop bufferless knock. And the third is our decision to implement ordered data flow execution. Snafu implements spatial vector data flow execution. This solves an issue we observed when taping out the prior state-of-the-art design MANIC, mainly that resources like adders and multipliers were being shared among different operations. This led to increased gate toggling, which burnt significant dynamic energy. To better understand this phenomenon, let's walk through an example. Consider the simple program and the two add operations in it. One generates addresses, the other operates on data. Not only do these adds operate on streams of values that have very different dynamic ranges, the values also look very different in binary. What happens then if these operations share resources, in this case, an adder? At the first time step, the adder is used to compute an address. In the next time step, it's used to compute data. The inputs to the adder have significantly changed from time step to time step. This leads to increased gate toggling at the output of the adder as well as internally to the adder. A similar thing occurs in the third time step when the program goes back to computing addresses. Switching from data operands to address operands leads to increased gate toggling. In fact, if you were to look at a waveform, you might see something like this, where toggling is happening on every cycle, the worst case scenario. Let's keep that in mind when we see what happens if we assign each operation to a different adder. Consider the adder for address generation. In all time steps, it computes an address. This means that in the second and third time steps, the inputs and outputs to the adder look very similar to the inputs and outputs to their prior time steps. It's a similar story for the data adder. Across the time steps, the inputs and outputs are very similar, so gate toggling is reduced. 
A waveform for each adder might look like this, showing a lot less toggling than when the operations were interleaved on the same adder. In fact, even though we have two adders, there is less toggling overall and less dynamic energy burned. This is the idea behind spatial vector data flow execution. We assign a single operation to APE per kernel to avoid resource sharing. This trades a little area for additional energy efficiency, but is worthwhile because even with this trade, these devices remain quite small, less than one millimeter squared. The second design choice we made to reduce energy was to implement a multi-hop bufferless knock. Buffers are a primary sink of energy in prior CGRA designs, but buffers are useful to keep clock speeds high. So a naive approach might be to put buffers between all links in the fabric. This is overkill, however, because signals can travel about 11 millimeters in one nanosecond across the chip. So buffers between routers are not needed. However, Snafu eliminates even more on-chip buffers. Instead of having buffers at both the source and destination, we only buffer values at the source and directly broadcast that value from the buffer to its consumers. This avoids duplicating data in multiple buffers on chip while having little impact on overall performance. Eliminating all of these buffers though, usually makes synthesis challenging due to the numerous but benign combinational loops in the knock. This is not a problem for SNAFU, however. To synthesize SNAFU-generated CGRAs, we adopt a methodology for top-down synthesis of FPGAs. Please see our paper for more information. The final design choice we made was to implement order data flow execution. This type of execution is borrowed from the nomenclature described in the paper cited at the bottom of the slide. In order data flow execution, operations must resolve in order. This allows us to implement asynchronous data flow firing very cheaply in hardware, since we do not need to track tags of operands. Asynchronous data flow firing in SNAFU means that we have hardware that tracks when an operation's inputs are ready and fires the operation as soon as they are. Not only is it inexpensive, but it is also a primary reason for why our compiler is practical, especially compared to some prior work on CGRA compilers because ours does not have to reason about the timing of operations, just the placement. Okay, now that we have discussed some design choices we made to reduce energy, let's move on to evaluating SNAFU. We use SNAFU the framework to generate SNAFU the architecture. SNAFU the architecture is a six by six mesh. There are 12 memory PEs, four multiplier PEs, eight scratch pad PEs, and 12 basic ALU PEs. SNAFU integrates with the complete system, acting as a coprocessor to a RISC-V scalar core and connecting directly to a banked main memory. More information about the specific details of the architecture can be found in the paper. We compare SNAFU to four different systems, a RISC-V scalar core, a traditional vector coprocessor, MANIC, a state-of-the-art vector data flow coprocessor, and three ASIC designs. Each system is an implemented entirely in RTL and synthesized using an industrial grade sub 28 nanometer high threshold voltage process, including compiled memories. The use of compiled memories is important because we have found high level tools like cacti for modeling memory to be inaccurate for the sizes of memory required for a ULP system. We extract energy from post synthesis annotated switching reports. We evaluate SNAFU and its baselines on 10 different benchmarks selected for their relevance to the ULP application domain. These include FFT, DWT, SORT, and Viterbi, as well as sparse and dense linear algebra kernels. SNAFU is highly energy efficient and performant. The graph on the left shows average energy normalized to the scalar baseline. Next to the scalar bar are the vector baseline, MANIC, and SNAFU. SNAFU clearly uses less energy than all three baseline designs, using 41% less energy on average compared to MANIC. Performance is also a similar story. The graph on the right shows performance for the same systems normalized to the scalar design. Once again, SNAFU outperforms. In fact, it's 9.9 .9 times faster on average compared to the scalar design.
Here's a more detailed look at how Snafu compares to the baseline system across the different benchmarks. On the y-axis is energy normalized to the scalar design, while on the x-axis are the different benchmarks, and for each, a bar representing Snafu and the baselines. We've also broken each bar into different components, memory, scalar, vector, or CGRA, and the remaining energy. Allow me to highlight FFT and DWT, which shows that Snafu is able to effectively make use of its scratch pads to reduce memory energy. Also, let me point out the sort benchmark, which is particularly good for Snafu, since Snafu places no limit on vector length. Okay, now that I've just discussed how well Snafu performs versus programmable designs, let's discuss how Snafu compares to ASIC designs and more generally the cost of Snafu's flexibility and programmability. This graph shows energy normalized to the scalar design across three different benchmarks, dense matrix matrix multiply, sort, and FFT. For each benchmark, we built an ASIC in the same technology node for a fair comparison. The left bar for each benchmark is the scalar design and the right bar is the most optimized ASIC design. We can see that across the board, the scalar design performs poorly compared to the ASIC design, using up to 111 times more energy on the sort benchmark. How does Snafu compare? To see how well, I've had to rescale the y-axis, cutting it off at 0.2. This is because Snafu is significantly better than the scalar design. In fact, Snafu is within 2.6 times on average of the energy of the ASIC designs. And Snafu is able to retain a high degree of design time flexibility and runtime programmability. For DMM and FFT, we also built accelerators that correspond more closely to the actual computation offloaded to Snafu. For DMM, this means we built a dot product accelerator and for FFT, this means we built a 1D FFT accelerator, as opposed to the optimized 2D version. This narrows the gap even further with Snafu. Snafu on average uses only 2.2 times more energy than these accelerators. Finally, we wanted to quantify the cost of Snafu's flexibility and programmability. To do this, we built a version of Snafu with the fabric tailored to the specific application and without field programmability by hardwiring configuration bits. Additionally, we also leverage Snafu's bring your own functional unit approach to specialize processing elements for sort and FFT to further narrow the gap. Snafu specialized uses only 1.5 times more energy than the ASICs and required little design time effort to produce. This shows that Snafu can be used by designers to incrementally optimize their designs and achieve ASIC-like efficiency. In the paper, you can find a lot more data. We conduct sensitivity studies to explore the Snafu design space and show that Snafu scales well as input size increases. We also include several case studies that show how bring your own functional unit can be highly beneficial and how compiler optimizations can better exploit the Snafu fabric. Finally, we include a more thorough exploration of the intermediate designs between Snafu and the optimized ASIC designs. We quantify the costs of asynchronous data flow firing, field programmability, and knock topology, to name a few. Please see the final section of the paper for the full discussion. I've just discussed Snafu, a framework to generate ultra low power energy minimal CGRAs. Snafu takes a bring your own functional unit approach that allows the designer to incrementally specialize the CGRA fabric. I've also shown that Snafu performs well against the prior state of the art, using 41% less energy while being 4.4 times faster. Snafu is also close to the energy efficiency of ASICs while maintaining a high degree of design time flexibility and runtime programmability. For more information and analysis, please see our paper. Also, please come to our talk and Q&A session Wednesday, June 16th at 8 p.m. Eastern. And with that, thank you for your time.